These packages contain heroin, cocaine, and crystal meth that's being handed out on the streets of Vancouver for free. From this tent over here, we are distributing a safe supply of drugs. The points of drugs you will get from the boxes being distributed from that tent have been tested. This means that you are at no risk of overdosing on fentanyl. And we want this model to be legislated so that it can happen all over the place so our friends and family stop dying. I'm in Vancouver, Canada, which is home to some of the most progressive drug policies in the world. And it's also in the midst of a deadly opioid overdose crisis. In 2016, the British Columbia government declared the overdose crisis here a public health emergency. Since then, more than 7,000 people have died of drug overdoses, with the majority of deaths involving fentanyl, a synthetic opioid that's up to 100 times more potent than morphine. Many of the deaths are concentrated in this neighborhood, the downtown east side, which is one of the poorest areas in Canada. I'm going to meet up with the founder of the Drug User Liberation Front, a local activist group that keeps breaking the law to hand out free tested drugs because they believe it will save lives. I'm Manisha Krishnan, and this is Free Drugs. This is 3.6 grams of ketamine, 3.5 grams of cocaine from the brick, 3.5 grams of cocaine washed with acetone. This is 3.1 grams of crystal meth, 3.7 grams of actual heroin and then Xanax bars. Eris Nix is a co-founder of Dolph, the Drug User Liberation Front, a coalition of activists that has been giving out free tested drugs in the downtown east side to demonstrate the concept of safe supply. She's ordered about $2,000 worth of drugs from the dark web that she's planning to give away after it's been tested for purity. These drugs will be broken up into like quarter grams and then given away for free to people. And I'm like, a quarter of a gram of drugs is zilch. It's like one, one hit for some people, you know. But at least I know with that one hit, they're not gonna die of a fentanyl overdose. And they're gonna know what they're getting and they're gonna know how they're dosing themselves with the drugs, which is totally different than uh, street drugs. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that's up to 100 times more powerful than morphine. Used medically as a painkiller, counterfeit versions of fentanyl began causing dramatic spikes in overdose deaths in the US and Canada around 2015, and it's gotten increasingly worse since then. In British Columbia, overdose deaths jumped by 74% in 2020, the worst year ever. The US had a record 93,000 fatal overdoses in 2020, more than two-thirds of which involved opioids. In some jurisdictions, fentanyl has completely replaced heroin and has reduced life expectancies. Since last year, Delph has hosted numerous drug giveaways, handing out crystal meth, cocaine, heroin, and opium in the downtown east side. Technically, it's considered drug trafficking and is punishable by jail time. Delph wants the government to allow compassion clubs, a model that would allow community members to supply each other with clean drugs without worrying about being arrested. So tell me the origin story behind the Drug User Liberation Front. What is it and what is its purpose? So I was working in the shelter system in Vancouver and in 2016, fentanyl hits the streets and we see this escalating number of deaths. And it was so bad that at the time, you know, 20, 2016 through 2018, we were responding to you know, five to 10 people dropping dead and you're having to breathe, breathe ox oxygen into these people's lungs and, you know, keep them alive sometimes for like 20 minutes while you're waiting for paramedics administering naloxone, whatever. And the, the amount of death I was getting exposed to made me be like, well, we need to fix this. It's an issue. I'm going to go work, you know, on this uh, from a public policy perspective, go work for the government. And all I was met with was, we can't do that. What you're advocating, getting people a clean and safe supply of drugs is something that's outside of our purview, or it's violating this, you know, memorandum of understanding. Nah, 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 nah. And I was like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, until eventually I was, I had my position terminated. So Dolph kind of grows as the natural extension of that, of me being like, here's what we need to do. We're gonna do it with or without your help. We're going to get clean drugs into people's hands so that they stop dying. 
What do you want the government to do like in an ideal world? In an ideal world, the government just gets out of our way and lets us open a store that is like a liquor store. And I'm like, if you guys want to tax us so you can provide healthcare and addiction services and recovery beds and all this shit, for sure. Just get out of our way. Let us get clean drugs into people's hands. Let us distribute them in a way where there's not going to be cross-contamination. Let us educate the public about how to use drugs, keep each other safe, how to use naloxone, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, just get out of our goddamn way and don't arrest us. The Vancouver Police Department told me that while Dolph's giveaways are technically drug trafficking, it sometimes overlooks illegal actions tied to protests. Can you talk a little bit about the mental toll that doing this type of work takes on you? I'm scared. I'm constantly scared and I can't say, say that enough. Like I live in constant fear. So I'm like, take the fear of arrest, take the fear of violence out of, out of the equation. Eris believes everyone should have access to safe drugs, not just people who are addicted because anyone who uses drugs is at risk of dying from an accidental overdose. Not everyone that uses drugs has a medical disorder where they have chaotic substance use they need to rectify. You know, maybe you're someone who uses heroin once in a while for fun. Maybe you're someone who uses coke on the weekend. Maybe you're someone who smokes crystal meth for whatever reason. But in every case, if you go to the street supply of drugs, you run the risk that your drugs will either have fentanyl in them when they're not supposed to, or if you're trying to buy fentanyl, have an unpredictable quantity of the drug fentanyl in them. So really what we're trying to prevent is this death, this like pallid, horrible death we're seeing all around us. And in the downtown east side, despite all its progressive policies, nothing they've done has slowed down the stem of death. I think that at first glance, when you hear about a group of young people that's handing out drugs for free, it sounds kind of insane. It sounds very sensational. I think after meeting with Eris and the Drug User Liberation Front, you see that there is a logic to what they're doing. You know, it's not like it's fun to be purchasing a bunch of drugs, testing them, labeling them, and then handing it out. It's a desperate attempt to just stop people from dying. Vancouver is considering decriminalizing possession of all drugs, and there are already safe injection sites and prescription heroin programs here. But Elizabeth Holliday, who directs harm reduction for the Public Health Authority, says there are barriers to receiving pharmaceutical alternatives to street drugs. It is a number of hoops that you have to jump through in order to get there, and then Ultimately, it's the prescriber who's going to determine what medication is going to be the right one for you, what's available at the site. It's intensive. It's a time commitment. So for across town, you have to go three times a day, potentially, which could be your whole day. Like if you think about what we do in our days and if we had to go three times to the same place to pick up a medication, like that would be a barrier to sort of the activities of daily life. Holiday says activist groups like Dolph have a history of pushing forward drug policy in the city. I think in some cases, like as the health authority, we're not able to necessarily, like we certainly can't be handing out illegal drugs that have been purchased from wherever, even with spectrometry testing. But the activism is so important. And I think of the legacy here, places like Vandu, the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, the activism that led to the creation of Insight. Like there is a history of this community pushing government and health authorities and officials to do better, to make change. Dolph is planning more drug giveaways and protests, but Eris says it's hard to stay positive. Are you optimistic? I'm not exactly sure we'll see things change very quickly, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more people die, you know? I can stay optimistic in the idea that I'm doing the right thing to try and help my community. I can have hope in the fact that we have allies in this community who are trying to help us and trying to change things. But in, in terms of being optimistic that things will change, like absolutely not. In fact, I'm, I'm <laughs> almost confident everyone I know will die.